Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week by the CAD Tech Seminars, thebimguys.com. You can find out more about our company at thebimguys.com. We do training, support, and implementation for Revit, Navisworks, and AutoCAD. In this video, we're going to talk about placing piles and then how to quantify those piles using some different tools. So first of all, you'll see here I have some grade beams, and I'm going to go back to my plan view here. I've got a top of footing, and I've put in some grade beams. As you can see here, they're just concrete rectangular grade beams. I set up a pretty standard grid so we can verify the numbers quickly as we place them in. And now I'm going to go to my south elevation and just verify. You see I have my foundation on my grade beams, and it's at top of footing. And then I come down here, and you can see we have the top of pile. So where you put these things and how you put them in is fine. I'm putting my emphasis now on placing the pile. So I'm going to go back up to top of footing. And what you see is we're kind of above where we need to be. So I'm going to create a new view. I'm going to go up top to views. I want a new plan view. I want a new structural plan. And I want that based on what top of pile. So I hit OK on that. So now where we're standing is on the level top of pile. You can see it right here. I'm going to place a pile in here. So I'm going to go up top and hit insert. I'm going to use the new load Autodesk family from the cloud. I'll type in pile. And I'm going to scroll on down. And you see we have this steel pile here. Now, you could re represent this as concrete or as steel. You can just change the name or just use it as is. Uh, we also have other pile caps that are available if you want to use them. I'm going to hit load. At this point, it loads it in. And now we have the element in place. Now let's go ahead and bring it in. I'm going to go to structure. You could use a column tool or an isolated footing. So I'm going to use the isolated footing. I fire this up. And Revit comes in and says, OK, I'm going to place this pile. It's a 12-inch diameter. I can drop it down, change it to other diameters, lengths, etc. Now, by default, if you hit Edit Type, you notice it has a 6-inch embedment. So I'm going to fire that up first, and we'll see what happens. I come down here, and I place this pile. I pl just place it, and now I'm going to go back to my south elevation. When you see the south elevation, you'll notice that the pile is actually embedded. And if you were to check that number, it's actually 6 inches. I hit edit type, and you'll see the embedment is 6 inches. Now, if you wanted to just zero this out, you could zero it out, and then that pile will sit, instead of 6 inches above the level, it'll actually zero out. Again, this is up to you. Notice it's not embedded anymore on how you set that pile, but I want you to note that there is a variable that lifts it above and below the actual level. So now that we have that understood, let's go back to our piles. If you don't see them, don't panic. We'll go down here and set it to wireframe. Once we can see them, now I'll go ahead and place another. I'm going to grab the pile, and then I'm going to hit this tool up top called Create Similar. It's going to create the same element, and I can place it at this intersection. If you want to place more in between, here's an easy trick. Place as many as you need. Let's say I need four or five uh, intermediaries. So I place them, and instead of trying to place them all exact, you could come in here and put some grids. But another trick would be to use the dimension tools. If you pick a dimension from the center of the grid here to the grid here, and then I pick on the actual piles, what this tool is going to do, it uses the two outside witness lines as anchors. And then when you place it and you hit equal, all the internal ones, are in, the intermediaries, will actually equal out. So now you can see they're equally spaced. If you don't like the way it looks, just come over here and change the quality text to a value, and it'll tell you what they are. So you can see how that's assessed. Now, if you had to make a change, uh, you could quickly come in here and delete one of those elements, like so. Then grab the grid again, hit equal again, and you'll see it resorts them. So a quick way to make adjustments, and notice that was real easy to do, um, and we're letting Revit do the math for us. So that works out nice. Uh, if you're coming from the AutoCAD world, if you had to put more of these in, you could grab these. I'll use filter, and I'll uncheck the actual framing, and I'm going to copy these down. I'll go ahead and hit the copy command. I'm going to actually turn on constraint. That's ortho if you're coming from AutoCAD. And I'll come across like so. You can also hold the shift key down. That'll give you the same result. So now we have these items placed. Notice that wasn't that bad. Um, and if we go to 3D, let's see what we have. There they are. Now the trick is we want to figure out exactly what the X, Y, and Z location is. I'm going to go back to the pile level here. And I'm going to come up top and place a, uh, excuse me, place an annotation and place a spot coordinate. Uh, spot coordinate is going to pick pick up pretty much X and Y. So when I select here and I pick here, you'll notice I'm getting some wacky numbers. The reason is many times in the beginning when you start a project, you don't set the zero. 
So how do, can I set the zero to have always start to track appropriately? Well, what you'll notice is I'm grab, when I grab the, this element, it's a spot coordinate. This is the one that comes straight out of Revit, by the way. I hit edit type, and then see it's pulling the survey point. So it's looking at the survey point wherever it is, and that's how it's locating this point based on that. So if you hit the little light bulb at the bottom, you'll see it reveal hidden elements. You may not see the actual coordinate system. The reason being is we're five or six feet underground. We're under that point, so you don't see it. So to see it, I'm going to go up to level one, and here we are on level one, and I'm going to hit the reveal hidden elements. Notice the point over here is at some random point. And this usually happens when people start projects. They start them random, and that's okay. You can actually move the project zero, which is the round one, or the site or survey, which looks like the little mountain or a triangle. You can move those into play. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, to move them into play, it's actually quite easy if you just use uh, the right tools. Now, there are a few ways to do this. This is one of multiple ways to move your points. I'm going to go up top to the Manage tab, and you'll see we have our coordinate systems over here. And I'm going to say, hey, Revit, specify coordinates at a point. So what I can do is I, I pick this tool here, and I'm going to pick this point right here, this grid line. That's my zero in the if we're looking at it in the y direction. So I'll grab that. And you'll see it says north south. I'm going to say that's my zero. So zero. And watch what happens. See that item jumps down. So it's zeroed out in the, if we want to use y direction or north south. Now I want to zero it out in the east and west. So I'm going to grab the same command again, specify coordinates at a point. I pick here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type zero again. Hit OK. And see it's zeroed out here. So now we got an x zero, a y zero. And let's verify. Let's look at our south elevation. And our south elevation, if we hit reveal hidden elements, you'll see that there it is. And it is at zero in the z coordinate. So that is all queued up nice and neat. Let's see what it's actually done for us. I'm going to turn this off here and go back to our pile plan. Notice when we zoom in on that annotation, notice it's zero in the east west and it's north, it's 60. And if we come over here and pull an overall dimension, which I will do right now from the grid here to here. We drag it out and notes it's 60. Um, so that is um, how we can zero that point out. So we could continue now and actually make a plan by just picking on these elements. And I could walk through here, zoom in a little bit, pick that intersection. So I can get that there, hit tab a couple times, there we go. And I can pick these and then load them into play. Now, if you want, we could also create a tag and that may annotate these a lot faster. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and actually create a tag and uh, tag these and also add it to a schedule. So if you enjoyed this video, stick around for the next and we'll take it further. Thank you.